forgiveness, forgiveness, forgiveness. And the reason why I want to talk about this, and it may not seem like it directly ties in with knowing when to walk away, but I think it's very important because a lot of times when we think about walking away from a friendship, it's not thinking about what God wants or what God's will is. Instead, it is this person hurt my feelings. This person upset me. This person betrayed me. This person hurt me, whatever. And you say what they did was unforgivable. But then you have to just think about all the stuff you have done and think about how unforgivable those things are. And I think when you realize, when we hear the scripture saying that Jesus will go and lead the 99 and go after the one, he's going after that one knowing that that one isn't a perfect sheep. That one is probably muddy, messed up, dirty, everything. And guess what? He still leaves the other 99 to go after that one because it is that important. And if God says, this is my child, then we are to follow his direction and what he says. And so I bring up a familiar passage of scripture, which is Matthew 18, 21 through 22. And it's basically where Peter and Jesus are talking and Peter is asking Jesus, how many times are we to forgive our brother and our sister? So basically Peter is just like, you know what? You got like one, two, three strikes are out. Like you're done. I'm, I'm, I'm over you. But instead, Peter asked him and says, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? As many as seven times? And Jesus said to him, I do not say to you seven times, but 70 times seven. Now, I'm not the best at math, but I did a little something, something before. How did I know that was going to be the first thing out your mouth? Not too good at math. Okay, this is legally led by the Lord. All right. So, but I did a little math because I know a little, I know a a little times table. Okay. So we do seven times seven. All right. We know how to do this. That's 49. Then you add the zero. So that's 490 times. So God is basically saying about 500 times you need to forgive and really we all know the art of hyperbole. So that just means, you know, that's a lot of times. So God is saying, you know, you're supposed to continue to forgive. And so the way I want to tie that back in to when to walk away from a friendship or when to stay in one, I think a pivotal part of having friendships is knowing when to and knowing how to forgive another person because one thing I have come to learn that in any friendship and in any relationship if you have a friendship or a relationship for any period of time it's going to require some form of forgiveness and so I say all that to say it's important to know when to walk away from a friendship and when to know when to know when you need to walk away from a relationship. But it's also just as important to know when, yes, something might have hurt you and something might have bothered you. But sometimes it is us acting like our father that we are who we are made in the image of. And we say, I'm going to forgive this person for what they did because guess what? The Bible also says love covers a multitude of sins, meaning that the love that we have for people and the love that God has put into us and the way he's forgiven us, we are also required to forgive those other people. And sometimes that means when we walk away, we forgive them in the walking away and that's fine. But also sometimes that means that those people are going to remain in your life and they, it's not their time to leave. It's just your job to forgive them. And so I think it's very important that you understand that dichotomy because 
it's I think a lot of times we jump to an extreme and say as soon as somebody has wronged us like it's time for you to go like you wrong me I'm sick of this like this is unforgivable whatever and I think that it's very very important that you realize the balance and know what God is actually instructing you to do versus what you feel in your heart in the moment Peggy. Um, so I thought about how the Bible says that like iron sharpens iron. Mm -hmm. Can you think about like, if you're in a friendship or a relationship with somebody who's not compatible, like the right type of metal and they, you, that person starts to rub against you, it's going to cause the iron to rust. Mm -hmm. Rust is something that changes color and it's very noticeable. So like mm -hmm. what you're saying where like, you know, you need to know when it's time to walk away versus when you're just hurt and in your feelings, you need to forgive that person. I think that when it's getting to the point where it's time to walk away it's noticeable but it takes you have to be able to look down and see that something's wrong something's changing color there's rust on me now and that's not okay like i'm Come deteriorating on. because this person is you know causing me to sin this person may be causing you to gossip or you didn't gossip before this person may mm. be encouraging you to drink and you you ain't drink before or like so like when when you're in a friendship with somebody who really ain't kingdom, like it's going to mess you up. And so that's just what I think about when I think about iron sharpening iron. There's no way a person who isn't kingdom is going to be able to push you into your purpose. Mm. Of course, you're going to be friends with so many different types of people. Mm -hmm. You might be friends with unbelievers. But when you think about like your purpose and getting to your purpose, those people who are like really in your tight knit group of friends or whatever, like it's really important that you know who those people are because if, like I said, if y'all aren't compatible, then mm -hmm. it's going to cause you to, to deteriorate. And the reason that's important is because like we mentioned earlier, like when Judas betrayed Jesus, yep. Jesus knew who Judas was and he yep. knew what his purpose was. But I think people don't realize like the friendships or the connections you have in your life can be a life or death situation. Not in the natural, but in the, in the spiritual. Because hey, uh-uh, 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 we gonna stop because we need to run that <laughs> back because that was, <sighs> Paige, that just blessed me. I don't know about the rest of y'all out there, but this just blessed me. Paige, run that back, run that back, run that back, run that back, run that back. You said, the people in our circle, you said this is a matter of life and death. Like we said in, in the first video, like you have to think of the end goal. This is legally led by the Lord. Mm. Let me tell you the reason the Lord is last, because I'm trying to be with my Lord and Savior, okay? That's oh. that's your end goal, period. That's your that's your end goal. And so if the people in your life aren't pushing you towards that end goal, then it's time to go. And if you keep that in mind, it'll be a lot easier to step away because sometimes I think, especially in the legal profession, mm -hmm. say, especially like as black women, mm -hmm. you might stay in friendships that you know you probably shouldn't be in yep. because if you step out of those, you're by yourself. Come on. You're like, dang, well, if I step out of this friendship, I don't have a study partner or I'm going to be the only person at my job and I ain't going to have no friends. I ain't going to have nobody to go to lunch with or whatever. Like you have to be like, your faith has to be so big yep. that you are okay with being like standing alone Come on. until God sends the people in your life who will be those kingdom people who will help push you on your purpose, not just in the legal profession, but again, to make sure you're getting to that end goal. Because there's a lot of people, I don't know who, somebody said this recently, I thought this was really good. There's a lot of people who follow God, but there's a difference between following God and when God is like your life. Because Ooh. people follow God when it's convenient, Ooh. when they need a therapist, Ooh. when things aren't going right, when they're upset. Oh, I listen to gospel music. Yeah, um, I was feeling really upset, so I'll put my worship music on. That's following God. But when God is your life and God is your everything, you can't be dealing with those lukewarm people because you understand that that's not going to push you to your purpose. And that will also help you to understand that like the people in your life, it's all about positioning. You have to make sure that you're in the right position so that God can continue to take you where he needs to take you. But if you're not in the right position, that means the right people aren't in your life. Those people are holding you back from being where you need to be. Mm. Then you have a problem. And it's, I think it's so easy for us to neglect that. You think it's me and God, we good to go, like I'm cool. 
But think about how close Judas was to Jesus. Mm. Literally his disciple. And again, he didn't literally take a knife and stab him in the back. He was, he kissed him on the cheek and that, literally that was it. And so again, Judas sent Jesus to his death, but Jesus knew what was going on. Mm. Do you know what's going on? Do you know who those people are in your circle? Hey, I don't know why you even no. let me talk because you just shouldn't just say that <laughs> we could have went on because let me tell you something. All I, want, all I want on a t-shirt and I'm going, you know what? We legally led by the Lord. So you want to know what I'm going to do? For the rest of my life, the next people that come into my life, I'm going to start carrying around paperwork. <laughs> and before we even begin a relationship or a friendship, I'm going to give it to them. And I'm going to say, are you iron or are you rust? Because that there is good <laughs> right there. Okay. Because if you about to just come up here and be rusty. Messing you all up. I don't need time for that. I like, I don't, I don't, I don't got time for that. I don't, I don't, I don't. Yeah. My rust is ugly too. And like, and mm-hmm. I don't know why I like, I think of this, especially with women, like y'all and I like I and I'm a, I'm a straight up say I and I, I used to be this way and I'm like trying to make sure I'm not that way but women are catty and they talk and they talk yep. and like it always makes I'm like man it makes us so ugly like we just look ugly it's not pretty like it's, yep. it ain't cute to be that way that's how Russ looks on steel it ain't mm-hmm. cute don't nobody want to buy a piece of iron that got Russ on it like because that it's not reliable Ooh. and that, that's I think that's that's Ooh. That's, that's, thank you lord that that's good right there it's like when you have rust on you are you reliable to god can he trust you to do whatever it is that he needs you to do no because why you're not going to put a rusty uh piece of iron in your building Ooh. to uphold a structure no it doesn't work oh, like that y'all need some wd-40 oh lord gotta stand that junk off come on we need to grease you up baby because you just rusty Oh, you rusty. Okay, let me stop. Let me stop. But y'all, for real though, let me tell you something. Paige, it was perfect. We did not, we didn't even plan this, but Paige literally completely segued into my final scripture that I just wanted to leave us with. But I think, I mean, Paige has just said a whole word. So I'm just going to read it. And then once I read it, you're going to realize just how it, it worked together. Let me tell you something. Here we go. One of my favorite scriptures. Romans out of Romans 12 do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewal of your mind that by testing you may discern what is the will of God what is good acceptable and perfect I mean I think I mean what Paige just said that just literally sums it up our job is to make the world conform to what we believe in not for us to go out here and conform because at the end of the day if that was the case god don't need us because i mean it's enough people out here raising hell but that's not that's not our job our job is to be countercultural to the point that the people that come into our lives know that they can't come into our lives with any mess or something that's out of the will of God because like Paige said we're not just followers of God we have God so immersed in our life that you can't see us without seeing God first Mm -hmm. and so with somebody who is coming into your life is not for that you want to be so strong in your relationship with God and living in the will of God that it's almost like um almost like a repellent like either if they're coming just to be negative or just to be an enemy and just to attack, we're going to zap them away just like the little bugs. But if they want to be drawn to us, it is our duty to help them and to lead them into a life that we are currently living. And so I want us to keep that in mind that being a friend and having friends in your circle, it is very important to know when people are dragging you down or not even dragging you down, but dragging you out of the will of God. But we must also understand that you can't always just walk away because just like Jesus didn't walk away from Judas, sometimes it is our assignment to make sure that just like Paige said, is a life or death situation. Yeah, it's a life or death situation as in 
that person that God has brought into your life, like it is a life or death situation from them in, for them. And if you don't act in accordance to the word and allow, and you allow yourself to be conformed to what they're doing, then Satan just won two souls instead of God winning two. And you have to keep that in mind because I think so often we say, oh, I can hang around these people who are doing X, Y, and Z, or I can hang around these people that aren't living in the will of God, and I can still keep my faith because I know who it is. But you have to realize we are human. And as much as we want to say that we are going to stay on the straight and narrow, and we're going to walk what God has told us to do, we are susceptible to outside forces. And so if you stay around those things, those worldly things long enough, you will become a part of the world and we don't want that and so that's why it is important to know what God is saying about when you need to walk away when you need to stay and when you just need to be in a holding place and listen for what he has for you going forward and so whether that is a family member a relationship you're in friendships associates at work or at school or whatever it's okay to be alone when that alone means that you are completely in the presence of God because there is no better place to be than just to be communing with you and the father so if cutting out other people means you have more time for that then it's worth it and so I will leave you with that Paige do you have any final words you said it all we did hey this was good tonight Listen. this was good i'm not even trying to shoot out on where this was this is good right here no because i think like just like it obviously we want to give a word that's going to help other people but mm-hmm. like you end up ministering to yourself because i mean i, I would <clears> say <throat> I got you Lord, <clears throat> like why why are you coming for me like goodness sometimes <laughs> you Come on now. <laughs> <In know it. laughs> Yo, y'all know it. Y'all know it. Go on. Okay. Y'all I'm senior, I'm not I am it. I'm done for real. Um, but we love you. Just know we are praying for you. Know that you are not out here alone. You have people, you have brothers and sisters. Brother, oh, I stuttered. That was ugly. Oh, I just had a Moses moment. Oh God, deliver my tongue. <laughs> You know, <laughs> y'all, I'm foolish. I need to stop acting like this. I'm sorry, y'all. The living your tongue felt like you were about to start speaking. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. That girl yeah. said that that word was so good she had to speak in her heavenly language. <laughs> okay, I'm done, y'all. For real, for real. Okay, oh, we love you. We are constantly praying for you. Um, just know that you are not out here fighting alone. We are here. We don't or i can't speak Paige, hey, close us out please because i'm just so caught up. i'm so caught up like she said for like the third time we <laughs> love y'all we appreciate you so much you are not alone god is with you everywhere secondly like we have this community for a reason so definitely yeah. like talk to each other talk to us like if you see me at school talk let's have a talk about jesus like let let's do it let's change the atmosphere of the law school if you see destiny she gonna talk to you anyway so don't try to avoid her um but no for real definitely like you you're not alone you're definitely not the only person in this profession trying to be kingdom not trying to be kingdom we are kingdom um but living this kingdom lifestyle so you aren't alone even when you feel like you're alone and even if you are in a place of being by yourself. Understand that a lot of times that's for your protection. So don't be discouraged in whatever hey, it is that you're going through. Hey. <laughs> okay, I gotta go off. I gotta go off y'all because let me see. You know you. what? And again, I know like it's getting dark outside super quick. Everybody hates that. It's so annoying. Um, do not claim this whole seasonal depression thing. Like everybody, oh, it's time for seasonal depression. No, it's not. Like Jesus didn't die on that cross for you to be experiencing seasonal depression. If you're experiencing that, you're definitely not alone, like we said before, but don't claim that. Like you are more powerful 
powerful and you have authority over that. So yeah. just know we're praying for you and whatever you're dealing with. I know, like I said, I don't know why I'm going back to this, but like, I know it's holiday season um, and a lot of people may be missing family members and things like that. So just mm -hmm. know that we're praying for you in your grieving process and we are here for you always. So, yes. and so is the Lord. So just pray. Come on. We are legally led by the Lord. We are out. We love you. See you next time. Bye.